After these things I heard something like the sound of a great multitude in heaven, saying, Hallelujah! Salvation and power belong to our God, for his judgments are true and just. For he has judged the great prostitute who was corrupting the earth with her prostitution, and he has exacted retribution from her hand for the blood of his servants. And they spoke a second time, Hallelujah! And her smoke is rising up forever. Revelation 19, 1 through 3. Babylon, the jewel of kingdoms, the glory of the Babylonian's pride, will be overthrown by God like Sodom and Gomorrah. She will never be inhabited or lived in through all generations. No Arab will pitch his tent there. No shepherd will rest his flocks there. But desert creatures will lie there. Jackals will fill her houses. There the owls will dwell and there the wild goats will leap about. Hyenas will howl in her strongholds, jackals in her luxurious palaces. Her time is at hand and her days will not be prolonged. Isaiah 13, 19 through 22. And it will come to pass on the day when the Lord gives you rest from your pain and from your turmoil and from the hard labor which was levied upon you that you will take up this taunt concerning the king of Babylon, that is, Antichrist, and you will say, how the oppressor, that is, Antichrist, has come to an end. How the golden city, that is, Babylon, has ceased to be. Isaiah 14, 3 and 4. Prepare a place to slaughter his sons for the sins of their forefathers. They are not to rise to inherit the land and cover the earth with their cities. I will rise up against them, declares the Lord Almighty. I will cut off from Babylon her name and survivors, her offspring and descendants, declares the Lord. I will turn her into a place for owls and into swampland. I will sweep her with the broom of destruction, declares the Lord Almighty. Isaiah 14, 21 through 23. The ruined city lies desolate. The entrance to every house is barred. In the streets they cry out for wine. All joy turns to gloom. All gaiety is banished from the earth. The city is left in ruins. Its gate is battered to pieces. Isaiah 24, 10 through 12. Yet the defensed city shall be desolate, and the habitation forsaken, and left like a wilderness there shall the calf feed, and there shall he lie down, and consume the branches thereof. Isaiah 27.10 Attack the land of Merathame and those who live in Pecod. Pursue, kill, and completely destroy them, declares the Lord. Do everything I have commanded you. Jeremiah 50.21 Come against her from afar. Break open her granaries, pile her up like heaps of grain. Completely destroy her and leave her no remnant. Jeremiah 50, 26 The land trembles and writhes, for the Lord's purposes against Babylon stand, to lay waste the land of Babylon so that no one will live there. Jeremiah 51, 29 For the time will surely come when I will punish the idols of Babylon. Her whole land will be disgraced, and her slain will all lie fallen within her. Jeremiah 51.4 Tyre, that is, as eschatological parallel to Babylon, has built herself a stronghold. She has heaped up silver like dust and gold like the dirt of the streets. But the Lord will take away her possessions and destroy her power on the sea, and she will be consumed by fire. Zechariah 9.3 and 4 Clearly the coming judgment upon Babylon whether or not it involves her complete and total depopulation and systematic devastation for all future time, will be horrendous. Babylon's affliction will produce a dramatic outflow of her non-native population. Like a hunted gazelle, like sheep without a shepherd, each will return to his own people, each will flee to his native land. Isaiah 13, 14 Babylon will suddenly fall and be broken. Wail over her. Get balm for her pain. Perhaps she can be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she cannot be healed. Let us leave her and each go to his own land, for her judgment reaches to the skies. It rises as high as the clouds. Jeremiah 51 8. Babylon's native population will be terribly abused and depleted. Whoever is captured will be thrust through, all who are caught will fall by the sword. Their infants will be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses will be looted and their wives ravished. Isaiah 13, 15 and 16 And I will send foreigners to Babylon to winnow her and to empty her land. 
for they will be against her on every side on the day that evil comes upon her. Jeremiah 51 2. Babylon will never be rebuilt to her former glory. For you, O Lord, have turned Babylon from a city into a pile of stones, from a fortified town into a ruin, from a city into a citadel for foreigners. It will never be rebuilt forever. Isaiah 25 2. Sit in silence, go into darkness, daughter of the Babylonians. No more will you be called queen of kingdoms. Isaiah 47 5. In many respects, it is a moot point whether the territory of Babylon, devastated by this invasion and its aftermath, will play host to any significant millennial population. For on the one hand, in the coming kingdom of our Lord, Babylon's name, fame, power and prestige will be gone forever in any case, with her commercial might completely obliterated. And on the other hand, no one in their right mind who with the benefit of Scripture has discerned the signs of the times will forsake the opportunity to flee during this narrow window when the world in general and the population of Babylon in particular wrongly assume that Antichrist's reign of terror has come to end. On balance, the many descriptions of complete devastation seem to leave little doubt that Babylon will be irreparably destroyed by Antichrist's dual assault of massive invasion followed by deliberate incineration. It seems clear that the Lord is making a very deliberate example of Babylon, one whose lesson will continue into the Millennial Kingdom, and the extensive description given in the rest of chapter 18 certainly confirms this impression. All other things being equal, therefore, one might suppose that everyone who does not take the opportunity to escape to Jerusalem during the calm before this storm will be caught up in it and destroyed, with the exception of those who somehow manage later to flee successfully, for example, Isaiah 47 2. There is, however, one piece of information which may challenge this assumption. We have posited in the past that up until this point, Babylon, the original homeland of the beast, has to a large degree been shielded from some of the worst of Antichrist's depredations, and may in fact have functioned as a sort of safe haven, not necessarily just for dedicated Christians, but possibly also for marginal believers and for non-believing Jews as well, especially perhaps in regard to avoiding the mark. Something they will no doubt be keen to do in spite of a lack of faith in Christ. Now one of the first orders of business in Christ's millennial kingdom will be the regathering for evaluation of all remaining Jews from the four corners of the world. It will be recalled that the ministries of Moses and Elijah and the 144,000 resulted in the salvation of a large number of Jewish people around the world, though by no means anything like a majority. At this point in time, the believing remnant is enjoying a protected interlude in the desert, kept safe by the power of God from all the troubles of the Great Tribulation until Christ's return, Revelation 12, 13 through 17. Given the large Jewish population in this country, and the very likely possibility that it will increase significantly as Jews around the world seek a place of safety during the worst of the tribulational events, it stands to reason that those Jews living in Babylon at this time will at least escape with their lives so as to be available for the great regathering after our Lord's taking up of his millennial kingship, and that they may perhaps form the largest element of this return. Writhe in agony, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in labor, for now you must leave the city to camp in the open field. You will go to Babylon, there you will be rescued. There the Lord will redeem you out of the hand of your enemies. Micah 4.10